I've always liked the quote from the Bible, by their fruits you shall know them. So when I got to know Yamada Roshi, the more I got to know him, the more I could see the fruits of his life, how, especially how magnanimous he was and how he could see um, the true nature of each person who came. We often only see people's shortcomings and what turns us off about a person. But he could see their beauty. And because he knew that this person is endowed with this wonderful true nature from the beginning, I think he um, enabled them to discover their own true nature. He was sick. He was in the hospital. And they weren't quite sure what it was. He had some kind of a growth on his leg. And I was at, because his wife, Mrs. Yamada, was working, I was asked just to help out a little bit for a few hours to be with him uh, before she could come from work. And so I was on the train going up to Tokyo. And I was filled with anxiety because I thought, you know, I, I hope he will get better and I hope it's not cancer. I hope it's not something serious. And, and then all of a sudden there was just the sound of the train. There, there was nothing else. And I knew that um, everything was going to be okay, even if he was sick that it, everything was okay. And it was just um, a very, it wasn't a tremendously great deep experience, but it was enough to help me really get started on this way in a more serious practice. And that's when I really started to um, get more into koan practice and um, he kept helping me to go deeper and become clearer. It helps me um, to experience an inner peace that keeps getting deeper and becomes more real. And I work with children who have cancer and their families, so I'm constantly walking with people who are facing death. And um, just before I came here, I was talking to the psychiatrist who works on our ward. And how do you help a young person who's 18 or 20, and they've just been told that there's no more treatment for you, and you're not going to get better. And they just go, they, they experience such a deep um, down, you know. And, and I said to him that many young people in Japan really don't believe in an afterlife. They think you die and that's it. But... I know that the families at the hospital, even though I don't talk about religion, I know they sense that somehow I'm a symbol of there's something more to life than what we can see. And one woman, when I was away, because sometimes I have to go back to the States or to Germany, she said, oh, it was so hard when you weren't here. And it was because two children had died. So, and this particular doctor is, um, he has a sense that there is more to life than what we see. He doesn't practice Zazen, but he has his own spiritual path and is very faithful to it. And I think we can communicate a presence. And I often 
families who are open to it, I teach them how to just follow their breath and how to become one with their breathing. And I say, you know, maybe you have a problem with your shoulder or your blood or you have a tumor in your brain, but you aren't sick. You yourself are the same Mardiko or Junko. And um, there's so much more to life than what we can just see. And somehow they seem to sense that. 